Hello, this is Pixel Freak, and today Hexage has released their new game, Reaper Tale of the Pale Swordsman. So if you're familiar with Hexage, you'd know that they are a game development company that is pretty masterful in their craft. Not only that, but they're known for creating games of an array of different genres. In fact, I don't think any two games actually overlap. You have Radiant Defense, which was a tower defense game, Radiant, which is a shooter, Evac, which is kind of a puzzle meets platform game. You know, I could just keep going on and on. They've got about six or seven games, but none of them overlap. They're all great games that happen to be different fundamentally from the last. Reaper is no exception from this rule. This is Hexage's first time they've gone into the action RPG genre, but they've also added in a few platform elements, and I think here, just like in the past, Hexage has created a game that's a pleasure to play. At its core, Reaper is a two-dimensional hack-and-slash action RPG. If you think that doesn't really make sense or doesn't seem like it would go together, well then I'm in agreement with you. That doesn't seem like a combination that should really work. Two dimensions and action RPG games just seem fundamentally separated. I'll stand corrected though, and I bet others will too, because this game has gameplay as its most astounding feature. And that's saying a lot, because Hexage really knows how to create a soundtrack and graphics and controls, and to say that gameplay overall is the draw to this game, when it's a genre that doesn't really necessarily fit itself to two dimensions, that's really saying something. That's not to write off the other elements though. For instance, the controls are spot on. Hexage has actually done some innovative work here too. They've roped off half of the screen for touch directional controls, but they don't split it 50-50. They actually do kind of a 20-80 thing with 20% of the screen allowing you to go left and then the other 80% allowing you to go right. Now the other 50% of the screen, if this isn't confusing enough, is all for your actions, your jumping, your different sword maneuvers, and it's all done via various swipes and taps. Now I've seen other games try to do this in the past, and usually it comes off a little bit wonky and a little bit jittery. Where Reaver is different is not only the intuitive different swipes and taps, but also Reaver runs like a top. Without a single performance hiccup, those swipes and taps are registered 100% of the time, which then makes the gameplay that much better. As a cool addition to the good touch controls, Hexage has, at least in the Android version of the game, supported controllers. Now, of course, the controller support is going to be a little bit haphazard, but connecting my Ouya controller to my Android device, it automatically worked, all the buttons were mapped pretty well, and I actually enjoyed playing with a controller more than the stellar touch controls. The graphics, sound effects, and music can almost go without saying are fantastic, but Hexage has already made a name for itself as very creative and artistic when it comes to both sound and art design. This game is no exception, again, to that sound and art design, and Hexage has just hit a grand slam here as expected. Rather than using more of a trademark neon design, however, Hexage has gone towards more of an evil Dr. Seuss type look that I think really suits Reaper well. When you start your first game up, you will be presented with a map covered in various nodes. Now, these nodes more unlock as you go through, and this is how the story progresses. You're also given a number of optional quests that you can do that will allow you to both gain experience points and gold. Now, the experience points will allow you to level up, and you'll select different skills and ability bonuses as you level. But with the gold, you'll also be able to visit the various shops that are presented to you through the game where you can buy new gear. In that way, Reaver is very much a traditional RPG. You can fully customize your character, and not only that, the ability trees that you have are quite in detail. You can customize your guy to play however you'd like to. However, also as an RPG, there is a story, and this for me was the softest spot of this game. While the dialogue is pretty hilarious, the story is not really captivating. In fact, I found myself often just speeding through all of the text and really missing out on that humor just because I didn't understand exactly where the story was going or really even care. I just wanted to get those next gold coins and beat that next quest so I could continue customizing my character. And that's a shame too because this as an RPG should be crutching a little bit on that storyline. 
Regardless of the weak plot, I think the gameplay and music and sound effects as well as the artistic design really make up for the story and allow you to still be captivated in the game even though you don't really care what's going on. Reaper is currently available on Google Play for free, but you only get the first 10 levels of character progression for free. After that, you'll need to buy one of the three different premium versions in order to upgrade and continue on playing through the game. Now, the first tier costs $3, and it allows you pretty much just to finish the game as it was intended. The second tier is an additional dollar for $4. You not only get that, but there are uh, there's an arena mode that is unlocked that I think is towards the end of the game. There's also a fortune teller that gets unlocked that can give you additional skill cards in some cases. And there's also some extra items that are unlocked in the item stores. Now, those have to be purchased normally. It's not like you're buying armor, but it's an additional set that becomes available in the game. Now, the third and last tier is an additional dollar for a total of five bucks, and that will unlock a set of side quests at the end of the game, another armor set that will be available in stores for purchase with gold coins, and you also get a whole separate mode called Dark Harvest Mode, and that mode uh, it pretty much is just all the story and node map elements just cut out. You fight, you get dumped into the store, and then you fight again. The game progresses through, uh, but you don't do it with your main character. You actually get a second character to go through that mode. So it's like playing through the game again, only in kind of an expedited way. After playing the extra mode for a little while, I can say both of those two extra dollar upgrades are probably worth it. And if you played Reaper and enjoy those first 10 levels, pay the five bucks rather than the three because I think you'll like those extra things that Hexage has set up for you and it's really worth those two dollars. Overall, despite the fact that Reaper is an RPG with a little bit of a soft story, the story is still very hilarious, the art and sound design is near perfect, and the gameplay is astounding. For that reason, I'm giving Reaper 88 pixels out of 100. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and until next time, this has been Pixel Free.